In this screencast, I will demonstrate how to make an OpenSUSE case badge using that particular distribution's current color theme. I was inspired to make this specific badge based on the countdown banner that Jacob Steiner developed for the launch of OpenSUSE 11.0 a few months ago. I'm rather fond of the artwork for OpenSUSE 11 since it seems to borrow from the Tango palette, my favorite color palette, and the colors remind me of my favorite superhero, Green Lantern. So, what does the OpenSUSE 11 uh, color theme look like? Well, let's take a look. If we navigate over to OpenSUSE.org countdown, you'll see that we have various uh, banners here. Um, this particular banner is the one uh, that inspired me to make my case badge. Uh, this is Jacob Steiner's design, and I just love the colors of OpenSUSE 11. They're, they're just brilliant. If you uh, scale down a ways, or I'm sorry, scroll down a ways, you'll see that there are various uh, other banners here uh, made by certain uh, folks, and they've all kind of followed uh, the same color theme. Okay, so that's what I want to mimic when I make my case badge. Okay, so let's get started. What size is a case badge? I don't know to get to tell you the truth. Um, I'm surrounded by computers all day. I've got case badges all over them, and they're all different sizes. Uh, so I don't know if there's a standard or not. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and make mine the size that I want to make it. Uh, what's great about vector artwork is I can easily change that size later if I don't quite get it right. Uh, so I'm not going to worry myself over it. So let's go to our uh, document properties. And I'm going to set my document up for 75 wide by 125 high. And we'll zoom in here. Okay, that gives me a nice border. And what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that is 68 wide by 118 high. And I'm going to double click on this and give this a 5 pixel uh, fillet all the way around it. And we're going to go to our line and distribute button and we're going to center that on our page. Okay, so here we have a nice uh, radius rectangle. Okay, that's going to be the base of our graphic. Okay, so let me zoom out. All right. Now the next thing I need to do is bring in the OpenSUSE colors. Uh, I have an OpenSUSE palette which you can download I think from the uh, OpenSUSE art uh, webpage. Um, it doesn't, I'm not really going to give you the link for that. You can find it on your own because I'm sure maybe you don't want to make an OpenSUSE 11 badge. You'll want to make something else. So it really doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is uh, import my palette. And we'll scale this down a little bit so it's not quite so big. And I believe these are the OpenSUSE uh, 11 colors. Okay. So what I want to do is uh, I'm going to highlight my rectangle. I'm going to select my dropper tool. And I'm going to change that to that nice emerald green color. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, go to our uh, fill and stroke dialog box and I'm going to give this a radial gradient. Okay, I'm going to go to edit and we're going to reverse this. Okay, and I'm going to give this, I'm going to change this color. Let me move this up so you guys can see it uh, to a 27BD. 0, 0, FF. Okay. That gives me just a lighter shade of green here. I really don't want to use this light green here uh, because I think it's a little too light. Okay. Now that I've got that, I can close out these dialog box boxes. We'll grab our gradient tool and I'm going to push this up just a little bit. And we'll move this down. Okay, that kind of gives me a, uh, well, got an artifact in there. That kind of gives me a, uh, a gradient around in this area here. Okay, 
Now what I'm going to do is right click on this object and duplicate it. And I'm going to change that color to a and got another artifact in there. Okay, I'm going to change that color to a uh, dark color here. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down a guide. And I'm going to double click on this guide. And I'm going to change that to 41.666. Okay. We'll hit OK there. And that brings me up about a third of the way up. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle out in space here and I'm going to snap it to the bottom of my guide. Okay, I'm going to select this object, hold my shift key down, select this object, we're going to go to object, whoops, we're going to go to path and we're going to go to intersection because I only want to clip uh, the bottom here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is highlight that, select my node tool, I'm going to select this corner, and I'm going to arrow down two steps. Okay, that kind of gives me an angle. And I'm going to select my node tool and pull up on the middle to give it just a slight curvature. Okay, I'm going to hold my control key down and select this guide to delete it. Okay, so basically what I've done let me zoom in on this. Uh, I've drawn this object here and I've given it just a little bit of a curve so it's not straight across. I think that's a little pleasing to the eye. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I want to get a stroke in here, but I don't want the stroke to go all the way around. So I'm going to right click on this object and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to give this a white stroke. I'm going to make sure it's one pixel and I'm going to zoom in on this okay and I don't want the stroke to go outside of my object which it's doing right now so having it highlighted what I'm going to do is do a dynamic offset and you gotta look real close but you'll see that I have a white diamond here we want to left click on that and drag it okay and that allows us to dynamically offset this object and what I'm going to do is just pull it in to the inside of my object, okay? And I'm going to remove the fill on that, so all I have is the stroke. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is grab my Bezier tool, and I'm going to start up here, and I'm going to go right down through the corner uh, of this stroke here, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to go right through the corner, then I'm going to come on the outside, go all the way around, okay, and I'm going to use this as a cutting path. Okay, I'm going to change this so I can get right through the corner, just about like that, okay? So I'm going to select my newly drawn path, my white stroke in the background, I'm going to go to path, and I'm going to do a uh, cut path, okay? That broke up this white stroked object, so I can click on the object down below and delete it. And we'll click on this, and you'll notice that I have these little hooks here. We want to get rid of those. So I'm going to select my node tool, highlight this one here, and delete it. I'll do the same over here. We'll delete that one. We'll zoom out, and there I have a nice stroke, the same curvature as my uh, dark object in the back. Okay, now I'm going to take this stroke, hold my shift key down, grab my eyedropper, and turn it to this uh, Sousa gray here so it's not white. Okay, and what I'm going to do is highlight that, and I'm going to go to my fill and stroke dialog. And I'm going to give that stroke a radial gradient. We'll select our gradient tool here. I'll hold my control key down, pull this up. And basically what I want to do is I want to get this uh, stroke to fade away before it gets to the edges. Okay, So I don't want uh, a sharp edge here. 
So I'm going to pull this in just about right there. A little bit more here. There we go. That, that allows us to, to have that fade out just a little bit. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate on this object here. And we are going to, let's see, what do I want to do? I want to go to my fill. I want to make this all black. Okay. I'm going to give this about a 4% blur. And I think I'm going to give this about a 50% opacity. And I'm going to use my up buttons here and I'm gonna push that up because what I want to simulate is a drop shadow okay I'm gonna push this all the way to the back highlight my green shove that all the way to the back and you see that I've got this drop shadow problem is though I think I have that drop shadow it's a little too dark on the edges so what I'm gonna do Let's highlight that and pull these nodes down just a little bit. So the majority of the shadow goes up and then it comes back down again. Okay. All right. Zoom back out. I think we're getting close. Starting to look good. The next thing that I want to do is uh, bring in a logo. I'm going to bring in the OpenSUSE logo. Make this just a little bit smaller. And let's see what that looks like here. Make this just a little bit bigger. Okay, I think that gets most of the face there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. What I'm going to do now is select this green object. I'm going to right click and duplicate it. And I'm going to clip off all this junk on that OpenSUSE logo. So I'm going to select both objects here. We're going to go to uh, Object, Clip, and Set. Okay. That clips off everything. And we're going to make this a Tango White. And I'm going to change the stroke to a 0.75 so it's not quite uh, so thick. Okay, and we're going to go to our Fill and Stroke dialog box. And I'm going to give this about a 0.6 for a blur. That's going to take some of the sharpness off of it. And I think I'm going to give this about a 25% opacity. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this and move it all the way up, take this one, move it all the way up, and then drop it back one step. That'll hide uh, some more of that logo there. Okay, I think we're getting close. Now we need some text. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type out the words OpenSUSE. And what font to choose? Well, the OpenSUSE font, I think, is called a Chola uh, Sans font. Um, I think that's a proprietary font. I'm not sure you can get it for free anywhere. Uh, in any case, uh, Jacob Steiner has just developed a brand new uh, OpenSUSE replacement font. Um, it's still kind of in the beta phases. I think Jacob's still working on it. And I think he's commented that it's a little too bold, a little too thick right now. But I think for our uh, project, it'll work just fine. Um, Jacob's font is called Fifth Leg. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab that. Uh, let me find it here. Fifth Leg. And I think I'm going to make this about a 14.5. That'll give us a, a nice, nice height there. And I'm going to zoom in on this here. OK. 
Okay, and we're going to make this tango white. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to select our font. I'm going to select this background here. You know what I forgot on this? I forgot to make this a nice little gradient back here. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to select our fill and radial gradient here, and we're going to do an edit. And I'm going to reverse this. Okay, and we'll make this just a little bit lighter there. There, I think that looks a little bit better than having that all one flat color. Okay? So, OpenSUSE, alright? So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to duplicate this. We're going to make this one uh, a full black. And we're going to make this a little blurry. Maybe a two. And we're going to drop the opacity, maybe uh, a 90. Okay, and we're going to see what that looks like behind it here. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is duplicate this, push this down, and we're going to put in a version number here. Whoops. Maybe I got to get this off to the side here. I'll make it dark so we can see it. Okay, we'll make this 11 point, uh, we'll make it 11.1 .1 just for the new release. And not sure what's going on there. Didn't quite come out so good, did it? <laughs> Make this 11.0. Oh. Make this just a little bit bigger. And for this particular one, I'm not going to give it a shadow. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and take both of these here. And we'll group those. And I'll true it up a little bit in the center. Looks like there. Okay, let me zoom out. I think we're getting close. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. Perfect corners. Let me get this thing so you can see it. give it a one pixel stroke. Actually, let's do a let's do a point five. Nah, let's do a one. What the hell? We'll do a one here. Okay, and let me show you what I'm gonna do here. Okay, and we're going to remove the fill, so all we have is this. And I'm gonna make this seventy five wide by 125 high, push this to the very, very bottom, and I'm going to make this dotted. Let's take a look at this here. Okay. And I'm going to take this and we're going to select page. We're going to center that up. Whoops. Right, page here. Center that up on our page. That way when we print this thing out, and you 
want to make this, I guess, a little bit smaller. Like maybe a 0.5, okay. And we'll fix that size again. And center that up on our page. Okay. And let me turn my border off so we can see what we've done. Okay. That way when we print this thing out, these are our cutter lines here. Okay. That gives us a kind of a, a white border around here. And you want to make sure that uh, when you do print this out, um, sometimes, you know, right now this is drawn transparent. So if you want it on a uh, different colored paper or whatever, you want to make sure that this background is white. Okay. So now what do you print this out on? Uh, for example, I have Avery printer labels, okay? You run that through your photo printer and you'll get yourself a nice little paper sticker. It works just great for, uh, for case badges. Um, a vinyl sticker would be better, obviously, but, um, you know, getting these uh, paper Avery stickers off a computer isn't that difficult. So let's zoom in on this in the center here and that is my tutorial. There we have an OpenSUSE 11.0 case badge. So depending on what kind of a fanboy you are, you can make an Ubuntu one, uh, Fedora, Arch, uh, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Go ahead and print that out, slap it on your computer, and tell the world what distribution you love. Okay? So thank you for watching. I'm HeathenX.